wait. Before you listen to this episode, I just had to tell you about our new free mini wealth building training. In this training, we're covering the first steps to building wealth, how to find your personalized wealth path, how to find and analyze deals, and then some. So don't miss out on this free training. I mean, what do you have to lose? It's free. Sign up at www.abundantculture.co slash newsletter. Don't let delay get in the way of your abundant year. Now, back to the episode. Welcome back to Abundant Culture Podcast. Where we dissect the mindsets and tactics of the true beast of business. People like Gary V, Grant Cardone, and Warren Buffett. All to create a blueprint to experience life more abundantly. Hey everybody, it's Joe here. Welcome back to the Abundant Culture Podcast. We're so glad to have you back again this week. Today we are speaking with a e-commerce slash marketing slash Amazon expert. This guy is a wealth of knowledge. He's been doing the e-commerce for several years now, replaced his full-time income as a drummer with his e-commerce business selling products on Amazon. And now he also helps other people start their own e-commerce business. And he even teaches people how to leverage chatbots so that they can talk to their customer before they even have a product to sell. This guy is, like I said, is a wealth of knowledge and you definitely would not want to miss out on this podcast episode. So get ready to listen to and learn from our good friend, Doug Levin. Hi, Doug, and thank you again for coming on to the Abundant Culture Podcast. We are super excited to have you today because we know there are so many online um, like business owners, especially nowadays, um, and we know that they need a lot of help. But before we get into like the business side of things, we have to ask you, what is your backstory? Like, how'd you even get into business? Oh, sure, sure. And, and thank you so much for having me on. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Um, so I guess what I can tell you is... I started, I think it was 2014 when I kind of got started with this. I was a musician, um, about the furthest thing you can think of away from being a business person. Uh, so I was a drummer, I was a professional musician, and um, I would routinely like work at night, work like, well, I don't know, four or five days a week. And then um, uh, during the day, I pretty much had nothing to do. <laughs> um, like I would sleep until, I don't know, one or two in the afternoon. One of the things I, I was only making 18 grand a year, but um, uh, I had good credit. So um, I had gotten into like the travel and, and miles and points world, if you're familiar with that. So it allowed me to kind of uh, get trips that I would not be able to afford at all as a drummer. Um, so like, uh, I remember I would uh, like my then girlfriend, now wife and like um, two stepson, we would, we went on a trip to Ireland where like, there's no way in the world I would have afforded that. Like a bunch of trips like that, we would go like across the country, get cash back, that kind of thing. Yeah. So I, I was kind of in that world where it's like, okay, I'm only making 18 grand a year, but I'm at least getting all these cool things because I got good credit. And um, what ended up happening was um, um, I was reading like those bloggers that talk about miles and points and they were talking about people like um, selling stuff and getting free points basically. Mm -hmm. um so at that point i was like oh this is pretty cool like like um and then i started dig digging deeper on it from there um that's where they talked about like reselling and selling stuff on amazon and oh you can basically get it for free and and all this kind of stuff um so that kind of led me down the rabbit hole of amazon um and then um obviously from there it kind of led into all of this um i didn't know at the time that's what it was going to be it was more just it was like oh it, it's a way to get more points and then just kind of snowballed from that that's so awesome yeah. i mean like you really don't hear a lot about like the in-between stages of people going from like their career to entrepreneurship and especially being like a successful entrepreneur like the fact that you were really just doing it just for more points is like <laughs> is really funny but I mean that's how like most journeys really happen you kind of just like stumble continue to stumble into new things and then you're like oh I'm here <laughs> yeah yeah it, it's definitely like the thing if you would have told me when I was a, like just a drummer six years ago, like, oh yeah, in six years gonna be doing this. I'm like, there's no way. Like I, I like I never thought I'd be like to this kind of point that I am. And yeah, it, it is definitely the thing. Like you always get these things that just kind of come out of nowhere that you don't even think are gonna lead to anything. And then all of a sudden, like that ends up being your life. But that ends up being this amazing thing that takes you down this other path that maybe leads to something else or whatever it is. You, you never know, but um, yeah, yeah, like definitely. I, I would have not thought that, that just 
miles and points would lead me down this road. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely insane. Mm-hmm. So could you tell us a little bit about like your your path to actually learning how to sell products online? Because I feel like you know, there's all this information really out there, but I don't know if that information was out there when you were kind of started. So how did you actually go about learning it? Was it like totally through trial and error? Or did, was there some mentorship in there? Like what was, it, you know, all of that? Yeah. So since I didn't have a business background at all, I've made millions and millions of mistakes. Um, I continue to make millions and millions of mistakes every day. Um, uh, so when I got started, um, I didn't know the first thing about what to do. I didn't even know there was like communities that talk about selling online. Like, like I, I think I read every, uh, like every once in a while they have like blog posts or something, but I didn't even know that there was like thousands and thousands of Facebook groups that talk about how to sell online for e-commerce or how to sell on Amazon or, or, or coaches and mentors, all that kind of stuff. Like I didn't know any of that. Yeah. Um, uh, so like I got started and like, I think I lived in my, my like one, like studio apartment and there was, um, I had heard of, Oh, okay. You can get started. And then I just did something called like fulfilled by merchant where you fulfill the order yourself, not knowing anything about how Amazon really worked. So then, um, I would like, okay, someone bought my thing. Great. And then I would go to the post office and basically spend more money on shipping. Um, then I probably made in profit because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, so it, like, I didn't really know anything <laughs> at all. So, um, ultimately, like, I, I think the path that kind of led me there was like, um, I did that for a while and I understood more about ha- how Amazon worked, but I wasn't really like profitable, I guess. I was just more like, it was stuff that was sitting around the house. We're like, all right, um, if it sells, it sells. If not, then all right, fine. I'm going to continue to basically be a lazy drummer. Um, uh, so, so that's kind of what it was. And then I started to Oh, I start to get see some sales come in. Now I want to figure out what I'm actually supposed to do. So I actually can start to make money at this and make this like scalable. Um, So that's when like, I think I started to become more interested. I found Facebook groups that talked about it. I never really had mentors at that point. I honestly wish I would have. Um, like looking back, but I didn't, since I didn't know any, anything, um, I was like looking at Facebook groups. I eventually found different types of communities that would talk about selling on Amazon, like arbitrage, which is what I was doing. Um, and like from there, I would just basically be a sponge and try and like ask a bunch of questions, um, make a bunch of mistakes and, and kind of go down that path. And then um, eventually it started to work enough where I, I, I found some people that I liked like I would go out to conferences here and there that would talk about like um, arbitrage kind of opportunities and like things like that. Like other people that I liked and that were also in the miles and points and, and reselling stuff. Um, and then some of those people, like we would start to become friends or whatever, we talk online. And then they would say like, hey, let's basically form a mastermind. And then that was kind of like the next step. And that's honestly where it, it felt like for me, that was like the first step of like, all right, I'm not just an idiot who doesn't know anything anymore. I'm like actually talking to people that are honestly way better than me. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of like able to step up my game now because I'm learning from like, like, like it's, it gets that idea of like, I always want to be the dumbest guy in the room. Like I don't want to be the smartest guy in the room. Um, and that's, I guess, a good thing about knowing nothing about business when you're getting started is like, all right, everybody is probably better than you. So what, what can you learn from it? Um, yeah. so, so that, that was, um, I think honestly where I learned a lot in terms of, uh, like kind of, leveling up i guess that's really awesome Mm -hmm. so in in your journey how long do you would you say it took from like kind of having this idea of from making the first sale to actually having a viable business uh that has profit and is actually ran like a business like how long did that journey kind of take well um i guess based off what you're saying there's two ways to look at it I'll, i'll say in terms of time frame if you're looking at something that's a profitable profitable business that didn't take long um, it like once I figured out, okay, um, yeah, miles and points are nice, but if you run your business and you're, you're taking into account like the miles and points you're going to get, you're going to go out of business within like a week. Um, like, so I, I learned that part pretty quickly. And then at that point it was, it was a lot easier in terms of the profit side of it. Mm-hmm. But in terms of running it like a business, um, honestly, it wasn't until more recently that I was, I was getting uh, better at running it like a business. Like um, it, it, it's honestly one of the things I think um, a lot of Amazon sellers struggle with is like it, because it's so easy a lot of times to start to make money on Amazon um, because if you're doing say arbitrage, which is honestly what I recommend for a lot of people when they're getting started, um, you find something at Walmart that you buy for like 10 bucks on the clearance rack, you could sell it for 30, 40 bucks on Amazon. 
and make um, a decent amount of money. And then you're not really doing much. And then all of a sudden, hey, I made 50 bucks. Hey, I made $100, that kind of thing. So you don't really understand like business. Um, uh, so then like I would have issues with like cash flow sometimes, like things that I didn't understand. Yeah. Um, uh, because I didn't know the first thing about business. And then as an Amazon seller, you're, you're when you're getting started. And honestly, there, there's businesses that are out there like three, four, five years that still don't understand how to run it like a business. Like I will say, I probably was one of those businesses where like, um, it was more like, all right, um, I got money coming in, right? I just made, yeah. I made 500 bucks off of this last run or I made two grand or whatever it is. Um, but you don't understand like the accounting. You don't understand um, um, cash flow. You don't understand forecasting for your next order. You don't like, like, like how am I going to pay any employees? Like these other parts of business that, yeah, I didn't know the first thing about. So like that part of it took me a lot longer to figure out. Um, like honestly, like um, when I started to do wholesale is where I started to understand it more. And that was probably two, three years in um, okay. where I actually started to understand. And even then it took a while um, in terms of like that part of it. And I'm honestly, there's still parts of the business today that I struggle with that I'm like, all right, I understand like, and I try and run it like a business and I try to do everything I can, but there's still a lot of parts I still suck at. And, and I'm still like, like coming from that person who was a drummer who didn't know any, the first thing about business. There's parts that I'm, I'm, I know I'm going to struggle at and you, you're trying to figure out and overcome it or figure out potentially how can I outsource this to somebody that will do a good job, kind of yeah. like those aspects of it. Um, so if that helps, I guess, in terms of kind of answering. Absolutely. The and when it comes to all the business models that you've actually done, I think I've heard you say mention arbitrage, you mentioned wholesale, mm -hmm. like, could you actually explain what those business models are and how you transition between, you know, all of them, basically? Yeah, yeah. So I started, I don't even know if it's called arbitrage, but basically it was just stuff that I, I had in my house and, um, and I was just selling it on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, then arbitrage itself is uh, where you're going to, a lot of times it's like big box stores, like a Walmart or Target, Office Max, those kinds of places. And you're um, looking for products, like I was saying, like that are basically you can buy low and sell high. So um, there is honest, like it's, it's what I recommend, like I was saying, like for people getting started, because it's it's the easiest way to start making money to start building your confidence because, oh, look, I, I spent a hundred bucks and I just made uh, 200. Um, and then you get that, like the confidence starts to build and you're like, oh, this is a rush and, and, it, and it gets you going uh, and it doesn't take a whole lot of money. So if you, if you spent a hundred bucks and it completely tanked and you didn't understand the Amazon seller fees and you didn't understand shipping and you didn't understand the race to the bottom. Bottom, um, all of these other things that come along with selling online, then, okay, you're out a hundred bucks. Yeah, it sucks, but it's not going to kill you. Versus like the other models where you're routinely placing orders of like 20, 50, hundred thousand dollars. And if you screw that up, then you could be out of business. Yeah, um, uh, you go bankrupt, right? Uh, so that's arbitrage, I guess. Um, and there are, there are a lot of sellers I know that still have that model today where they're making say seven figures. Um, I think probably one or two I know is doing eight. Primarily it's, I don't know, five, Five, six, seven figures. Um, so they're they're able to make a living at it. I was doing it when I started, um, and it was going well. Um, although the issue I'll say is that every model that that is on Amazon has its pluses and minuses. Um, and obviously, I, I laid out some of the pluses. Some of the minuses are you are not an authorized seller of those products. Um, so the brands primarily are looking at you as a problem and they don't know how to stop it, um, because your entire business is based off a gap in the market. Um, so um, you found something at Walmart um, or you found it on a shop, you put it on a shopping list. So you routinely buy it and restock it. And that brand knows nothing about you. So mm -hmm. a lot of times what I found as I started to talk more and more to brands and, and most arbitrage sellers will see this too, is um, brands hate Amazon. They absolutely despise, like, uh, like they don't like the fact that Bezos and Amazon have taken over and got rid of the brick and mortar stores, but mm -hmm. they also hate it from the fact that people are reselling their stuff and they don't know what the problem is. They don't know what, like how to fix it, basically. Yeah. There's a supply chain leak and the arbitrage sellers are taking advantage of it, which is completely legal and, and fine, but the brands don't know what to do to fix it. Yeah. Um, so as a result, sometimes the brands will do things that are not even legal, not knowing that it's not legal, or just because some Amazon seller has put it in their head or some service out there has put it in their head, well, that, yeah, you can do this and you can, and then you get rid of these arbitrage sellers. Um, so they'll put things like, like uh, intellectually proper cl property claim and, uh, and other, other kind of things like um, where it basically in Amazon's eyes, 
they're always like a shoot first and ask questions later kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So the arbitrage seller could get suspended. Right. Um, and now it's basically on you to try and prove that you're innocent. Um, so you could, like, I was doing arbitrage and I would hear all these horror stories of everyone getting suspended. Um, and they're buying the same types of products I was, um, going to, to the same places I was. And I was starting to make more and more money. And I'm like, all right, I'm making more money now than I was as a musician. This is quickly becoming my job now. And what happens if it all goes away because I, I'm now suspended? And now I'm going to have to give two to five thousand dollars to some agency service to get me unsuspended, or I may not ever sell again. Yeah. Um, so um, I was basically nervous about that and scared um, to the point. Of like, all right, now I want to figure out something else I can do that's basically more safe, um, maybe not as high a margins but um, is consistent and something that can be very profitable. Um, yeah. And that's when I looked at wholesale and um, wholesale is where you have an authorized relationship with the brand. Um, so you reach out to them. Um, the margins a lot of times are not as great as arbitrage where arbitrage you could have, like if you're looking at ROI, there's some that could be 100, 2%, 200% ROI. Uh, sometimes it's 40, 50% on the low end. Lowest I've, I've seen typically around 30, but that was obviously a while ago that I did it. Wholesale mm -hmm. margins are anywhere between 15 and 30 or 40 percent in, in terms of profit margins um uh so it's it's usually less um obviously there's always exceptions but um the big thing with our with wholesale is that it's consistent so you have that that relationship with a brand or a distributor and you're going to i, I always give this example you you can you're not going to get a wholesale account with nike but um they're too big you're not it's not going to happen but say you say you were to reach out with nike and say i want to sell your stuff and then uh they would say all right cool fill out this form basically give us your, your EIN, your tech ID, all, all this other information. And then um, now you're an authorized seller. We, we're giving you an invoice um, so that you can, you now are have proof that, you, that you're an authorized seller. That gives you more stability. Um, like the thought was in my head that, all right, um, now I don't have to worry about this much anymore. The brands are talking to me. They, they know me um, and there's no issues here. Um, yeah, I'm not making 50, 100% ROI anymore, but I'm still able to make a business and still make 20, 30% profit margins. Okay, it's cool. Um, and that was the thought with changing over. Um, and then I did that for a while and it worked out pretty well. I, I got exclusives out of it um, uh, and I was doing well. Um, however, um, like every other model, there's always a negative. Um, so I ended up having a, a shipment like my first exclusive where it was a $20,000 order. Um, and it was like a, a, a thing of energy drinks and um, it was winter and it was our first shipment going into Amazon and they just left it outside in the cold for like two days. And so as a result, um, it cracked and they're basically like, you're out, you're, you're, you're out of luck. Too bad. We're not accepting it. And uh, you now have to pay as well to get, get the inventory back. Wow. Um, so I was like, <laughs> Like I'm thinking, all right, wholesale is going to be like unicorns and rainbows and awesome. And I've got an exclusive. This is amazing. Right. And there's still issues. And then, so like I go through that whole process thinking, all right, I got to find a better way to do this. And then I don't, of course, like most people do, I don't, never change anything. I, I keep doing wholesale. And then like six months later, um, I wake up and all I'm doing is wholesale at this point. And I wake up to 10 new sold as new complaints on my So it's basically, it's not a suspension, but it's something where it dings your account. And now like I've got 10 of my best selling products that are wholesale. So I'm, like, I'm authorized to sell them and I can't sell them now. And I not, now I have to spend another two to $4,000 to get this worked on so that I can basically have a plan of action and like kiss the ring for lack of a better term of Amazon and say how I'm going to do better. And, and this is my plan to make everything great again. And at that point, um, like that was kind of like the last draw for me. It's, it's like, all right, I love Amazon and, and it's amazing, but no matter what I do, it, it's, there's always going to be a downside. There's always going to be something that can happen. So what can I do? Um, so that I can still use Amazon and and still because it's an amazing platform and I love it and I still use it to this day, but not have that be my sole source where if something happens like you sold is new like suspensions like any of that kind of stuff that I'm, I'm gone like I was just talking to a buddy of mine um, a couple weeks ago he's doing everything within terms he's been selling on the platform for about five years and he had something come up which honestly wasn't even his fault and he found out what it was afterwards and his account's been suspended for about two or three weeks um, and it, like these these are the things that can cripple your business yeah um, so like that was kind of the part where I then a transition to um, obviously the part of, of what I ended up doing called private label um, uh, where we're the brand we created our own products um, and our own brand where we still sell on Amazon but also sell away from it and and work on other things like building up our customer list things like that but just to kind of understand that no matter what happens it's an amazing platform but like 
I mean, like my buddy, he's been doing it for five years. He's been doing everything right and he still gets screwed. So like, uh, I don't want my business to go under. I want to do everything I can so that um, I, I can leave my chance for the best chance for success as I can. Um, so that was kind of like, those are the three models and that's kind of how it led me to where, where it did from a very long answer. But, yeah. <laughs> No problem. I'm learning yeah. like yeah. so much right now. It's like <laughs> ridiculous. Um, so then when it comes to, you mentioned that, so you're selling on Amazon and you're selling outside of Amazon. How did you do, I guess, like when you sell on Amazon, are you doing like any other marketing um, for that place specifically? Or is it just like people just go to Amazon? So it's kind of just put it up and it's going to sell. Um, that never happens <laughs> uh, uh, on Amazon. Like I think it happened probably like five, 10 years ago that you would get those people that would like, Hey, I just put it up and started to sell. That does not happen on Amazon anymore. Like uh, um, I think there was actually like, like when they had that Congress meeting with like um, uh, the four big players and they were talking to like um, uh, Bezos from Amazon and they were saying like um, they were actually bringing up concerns where like third party sellers, which is what we are if you're selling on Amazon um, for like 95% of the time you're a third party seller. But um, they were saying, oh, you, you don't need to do anything. You can sell on there. But in reality, what actually happens now is that if you're not basically paying, you're not going to get like you have to do some type of advertising like PPC is what's called on Amazon pay per click. Um, if you're selling like your own products. Um, if you're selling like arbitrage, like we were talking about, or you're selling wholesale where like, it's already a product that is established and sells while it's on, on its own. You don't need to in those instances, unless you want to like push it more. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, in general, if like, you're putting up a, like just putting up a listing, um, like, oh, here's a brand new product that we're putting out there. Um, say like your, your own br new brand, or you're just putting something on there, unless it's Paw Patrol or something that's like one of those really like huge names. Um, no one's gonna care. It's like 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 uh, the joke I think they, they say in general is like uh, uh, the the best place to bury a dead body is on page two of Amazon search result. Um, like like <laughs> nobody cares. Like like so it's just kind of that thing. Like Amazon will not really give you any push if you're not doing something. Oh, okay. Wow, that's that makes crazy. Sense. Didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> and when it comes to uh, you said when you were working with wholesalers, obviously you can't get an account with Nike, but there are wholesalers you can get an account with. Is there anything you needed to say to those wholesalers to kind of make them feel comfortable, make them feel that you were credible and that you were a legitimate business as opposed to, you know, just some random person trying to sell their products? Or is it just as easy as just asking? It's one of those things I, I'll say about wholesale in general as a model is it's one of those things that's all about processes. So like um, uh, expect to do a lot of work up front um, because you have to basically do a lot of sourcing where you're like, you're trying to find um, usually smaller brands is what works best at, in my experience. Like you're, since you're not going to get a Nike, you're not going to get a Paw Patrol, yeah. like those kinds of companies, it's better to honestly reach out to the smaller brands. Um, uh, but then you need to do research. You need to find um, like how, how am I going to be able to help this company? Like the biggest thing for me when I was doing wholesale is looking at it from the perspective of the brand is my customer. Um, so if you think about it from the customer's perspective, um, like I was saying, like earlier, when I was talking about arbitrage, they had this bad, um, uh, thing in their head about Amazon, like, because, um, because maybe it was arbitrage sellers coming on their listing or it was hijackers coming on their listing for wherever, um, or, or Amazon has taken away their, their sales that they had from brick and mortar or from their own website or whatever it is. They already don't like Amazon sellers, like in general, like obviously there's always exceptions, but, um, in general, they do not like them. So when you're coming into a conversation trying to talk to them to sell their stuff on Amazon, um, if you just basically say, I'm gonna sell your stuff, they're gonna like, well, go away. Like they don't care. Um, so it's really about coming at it from the perspective of how can I help them? Um, so when you get started on Amazon, um, it, this is why I also say to start with ar arbitrage. If you start with arbitrage, then you'll start to understand how Amazon works better. Maybe you start to create some listings every once in a while. If you found a pot patrol or something, that, well, that gets into a whole other thing, but whatever. Um, uh, 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 just in terms of the creation of, of listings. But like you go through the process and you start to understand it better. When you're reaching out to a lot of these brands, you may identify through that sourcing process that we're talking about like on the front end, where it's like, okay, um, their listing sucks. Um, uh, uh, I, I've been on selling on Amazon now because I know it from arbitrage. I know this, this, and this. Um, maybe I've run a little bit of advertising through PPC. Um, like I've got all of these basically like value props that I can 
go into a conversation when I'm talking to this brand and say, all right, um, uh, I like, what issues are you fi finding with your, like, like, usually how I'll start, start the conversation when I was doing wholesale primary, I was like, all right, just because I identify something doesn't mean they, they do. It's the idea of like, you can't make somebody think something, so don't try and convince them. Yeah. Um, so I'll first look at what is your biggest problem? Um, like, what are, you, what are you trying to get? And maybe it's just something as simple, I want more sales or, or whatever it is. And then you address that first. Um, because like you, you may look at it and go, their listing really sucks. If they were to change this, 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 and this, it'd be much better. I would like to do that for them. But if they don't care, then why, then good luck getting anywhere. Yeah. Um, so, so first go at it with that perspective of like, obviously, how can I help them do the research? Don't go in blind, um, identify ways that you can help them and then listen. Um, uh, when you get on that call, um, uh, don't just be a, a typical Amazon seller who's like, well, I, I want to buy your, buy your crap. Like you're actually trying to give value. You're trying to like, think of ways that you can help them. Um, and then uh, obviously after, after you address whatever issues they're trying to do, then you can bring up other stuff and try and transition it where you can obviously give them proof. Maybe you've got competitors of theirs that you've identified that are doing much better than them. And you can say, hey, well, um, uh, I think I have some some insight as to why company X is selling so much better than you. Uh, yeah. And now, now you've got their attention because they, they hate that brand, right? They want to do so much better than them. Um, uh, so now you, you've actually done research. You're not just some idiot who wants to sell their stuff on Amazon. You're, you're now like giving valuable insight that's going to help them. And now they start to think, oh, okay, they're actually giving me some value here. And that can lead to, okay, well, I can try and help you solve these problems. Um, it's the thing that I talk about with everything that we do is always, everything we do is just about solving problems. And that's yeah. what you're doing. So. Absolutely. Yeah. So my next question is, you've done a lot on the e-commerce side and you've given so, uh, so much value on that side, but you also have this marketing thing going on. Could you tell us a little bit more about that as well? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, when I made that transition to private label, um, I like, uh, and I was like, all right, I still love Amazon, but I want to like start to own my customer. I want to not be completely reliant on them. Um, I started to kind of like, like we had our first product and brand that we were working on and for a sp like for reasons that sucked at the time um it took a lot longer than i thought it would um so as a result i basically couldn't do anything so i was like all right um uh at that time though it ended up being the best thing for me because um i i dove deep into understanding marketing um like how to own your customer i dove deep into chatbots so i can understand that aspect of it as well like how to have a conversation with them and get them onto your list and buy from you um so from there i started to do it so once we did launch like I, honestly even before we launched um that's where i built up our list um to like twenty thousand, and then from there i would start to have success we get people to buy I like because of that, I knew a lot more about marketing um, and it, it helped us. So like, OK, now we're able to sell on Amazon and off. And then I would have friends um, like that. We like other people that were in masterminds, other people that were in other Facebook groups and all these other places where they would have the same issues that I did where. All right. Um, something happened with Amazon or they don't know how to start like selling and they want to start to own their customer or whatever it is, like the same issues that I had. Like, yeah. um, I can't remember who said it, but it was something like your mess becomes your solution or your, or your product or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, uh, so, so because I had had that success with my mess, um, now I had other people reaching out to me, asking me questions and, and I, and I, I still love like reaching out and trying to help people with their questions, but it was just like, all right, well, um, a lot of people are trying to get help here. Then maybe I could just have this be something I do in terms of trying to help. Usually it's more established kind of like private label ish kind of a brand or wholesale with exclusives where, like I can, I, like the marketing helps because like, if you don't have like uh it's the thing I'll say is like, if you don't have a niche, if you don't have like a specific brand, it's really hard to do a lot of the marketing strategies, like yeah. to really own your customer. So that's like, like I do kind of have that, like those qualifications as well. And it's like, uh, obviously if I, if I'm trying to teach you how to ship in your first box on Amazon, then I don't know if marketing is going to really help as much as like trying to get started with Amazon. But for like that kind of person who, who, who is more established, um, has their own brand, 
like those are the people that I feel I can help better with like marketing and, and kind of coaching or any of that kind of thing. And that's where that's kind of evolved, I guess, where like, all right, I had so many people trying to like ask it. It's like, all right, yeah, I guess um, let me see if I can help some people. So that's kind of where that kind of started to, to become what it is. Cool. cool. So can you give us three things for um, people selling online, whether it's like on Amazon or Shopify or whatever? Um, can you give us three things for people to start implementing today to grow their business? Yeah. So one thing that I will say is like Amazon and just in commerce in general, I think are different. So uh, I'll say like, if you were going to start on Amazon and then e-commerce, if that's cool in terms of like, I, cause I look at them as separately. Um, so for Amazon, um, uh, under, like figure out what, what model you're going to start with. Um, like, obviously, like I said, I usually recommend arbitrage, but figure that out. Um, uh, and obviously like other things like, un- like, like you were saying before the idea of, of understanding it's a business. Um, I did not, and I wish I would have, um, a lot of Amazon sellers don't. Um, uh, so just kind of go through the proper aspects to like, create create tax id create um everything like make sure you have accounting in place all of the other stuff so you're you're treating it like a business um uh, that's just in general whatever you're going to do but um uh understand what model it's going to be whether it's arbitrage wholesale private label um uh understand like how are you going to fulfill as well like is it going to be what's called fba or fulfilled by amazon where like you're shipping it into the customer or sorry you're shipping it into amazon and then amazon is taking care of everything are you going to do it through fulfilled by merchant which means that you're fulfilling it um uh most people will do fba and it's what i use um understand that there are usually more fees with that um understand the seller like the fee structure on amazon in general um because um a lot of people when they get started they don't understand amazon they'll go oh i found it for 10 bucks and i'm gonna sell on amazon for 20 i made 10 bucks right that's not what happens uh like there's depending on the category it's like eight to 15 percent in general like fee that amazon takes off of your purchase price Mm -hmm. so if you're selling something for like 10 bucks they're already taking what a buck 50 um so understand that there's also fulfillment fees like when you're doing fba so like your shipping costs um uh there's also storage fees so like there's all of these other parts of it that come into play that you don't know about um so understand those parts um and then honestly after that i would say like on the on the amazon side and honestly just in general with e-commerce is get into masterminds like 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 become a sponge like um like obviously like I'm happy to help in terms of people have questions, but like it it gets back to the idea of like when I started and like a lot of people, when they don't, when they start, they don't know what they don't know. So like join as many groups as you can find people that are like you, but like, like, like engage in these groups on a daily basis and look at the questions that they're asking. Um, and, and like immerse yourself into that world and you'll start to see things that come up. So that kind of answers, I guess the Amazon side. Um, on the e-commerce side, it, it it all really comes down to I guess three three things. I put them into a into a into a, a big bucket by themselves, but honestly, they're three separate things. Is um once you have a brand and you're trying to sell online in general, like on your own store or something, um, or even if you're trying to do a private label and you're you're going to Amazon, it can it can work if you just want to be an Amazon seller. But for brands that actually want to own their customer and want to diversify and like have a sellable asset, I look at three things as understanding who your ideal customer is like every step of that. So you know who, who you want to talk to, how you want to talk to them, um, uh, what their pain points are, all of that kind of stuff, um, what your brand values are going to be. Um, so like, I can't think of anything at the moment, for, but, it's, but it's flanking. But basically like, like what do you stand for? Like yeah. um, uh, that kind of thing, like, and, and, and like your propositions, um, uh, what makes you different from everybody else? Because at the end of the day, if you're a brand, your product is not, is probably not that much different than 50 other brands out there. So it, it comes down to your brand values and then, Lastly, is it comes down to your competitors and knowing knowing who they are and knowing your propositions, knowing how you can differentiate from them, um, knowing how you can take advantage of their weaknesses, how you like those aspects of it. So you, you know everything about them, um, uh, possibly. Say. So those three are, are the big things, I would say, as you're getting into like just uh, marketing brands and, and like selling your own stuff like online. Awesome. Absolutely. And then um, what changes have you made to your business like after the pandemic started, if you made any changes at all? Yeah. So I didn't at first. Um, uh, uh, I think that like, like uh, the virus kind of, obviously I, it got everyone by surprise. For us on Amazon, it honestly didn't hurt. It was the fact that we had to um, make changes in terms of 
um, because Amazon was booming, like, like way more than even Black Friday, Cyber Monday stuff, because they were the only game in town when everyone's stuck at home. Um, we had to do stuff in terms of, um, uh, of our inventory levels. Um, so that we make sure we didn't go out of stock. Those kinds of changes, honestly, were, were the biggest thing we did. Honestly, like uh, other than that, there hasn't been much changes for me, for my business personally. It's been more about me, more about um, the mindset aspects of, um, and this is something that had been going on, I think a little bit before the virus started, but it, it, it ramped up, I think even more after, is like um, everyone, when you're stuck at home, when you're, um, you're stuck with your kids 24 seven, you're, you're, you're wondering what's gonna happen kind of thing and, and you're scared, your mind can, can go to a really negative place. Um, I know a lot of people it did. I know a lot of, honestly, Amazon sellers, a lot of e-commerce sellers that it did um, uh, because I mean, their, their businesses were, were negatively affected by this too. Um, so it, it's the place that all of us can go to. Um, a lot of us um, have gone to that. I mean, and, and there's times I probably, even let myself go there, but just not as much, I guess, just because I was lucky. Um, but ultimately, like the big thing was the mindset aspect of, um, of, of really like, yes, I could, I could look at it from the perspective of I'm going to be on Netflix all day, and I'm going to, there's nothing I can do. This is terrible. Um, and, and everyone has, has a right to feel however they, they, they feel about it. I'm not saying that they don't. Mm -hmm. um, but, but for me personally, um, I didn't want to be scared. I didn't want to feel like that's going to be how I live my life. Yeah. Um, so you know, I basically like, immersed myself into the business and like, all right, what can I do to, to, cut, to grow the business? What can I do to, to grow my mindset? What can I do to, 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 to keep getting better, like, like learning and growing uh, as much as I can. And, and that's where I kind of like doubled down and, and did everything I could um, to look at my life that way. And obviously like that led to other good and bad things, but, yeah. but ultimately I like that was, I think was the biggest change for me. And um, I, I think that's had a huge impact on me in terms of like the positive mindset, I guess, and, and feeling like there's always going to be setbacks that happen before the virus. It, it happened to me and before that virus it happens to everybody after the virus, it happens to me. It happens to everybody. It's how you choose to deal with it and what you're going to do moving forward. That ultimately is the big thing that, that you can determine. Um, so that was actually absolutely. Good thing for me. absolutely. Yeah. And what is the number one takeaway that you would want somebody to get from this podcast episode? Because there were so many gold nuggets. Uh, mm -hmm. What What was your favorite kind of thing that you uh, want people to know? Honestly, that if an idiot drummer can do it, then anybody can. <laughs> um, uh, I, I think uh, um, really um, all it takes, like like, and this is where I like. Obviously, we're talking a little bit about the, the mindset parts parts of it. Um, ultimately, like as someone who knows, who knew nothing at all about business when I got started, the biggest thing I would say is, is when you're getting started with this, like it's honestly not difficult. I mean, um, there's always, yes, it's business and you have to understand and you have to know how the business works, but you can learn that. It's really about diving into it, understanding you're going to make a lot of mistakes. Like I said, I'm, I make millions of mistakes all the time. Um, and, and am I going to learn from it? Am I going to implement? Am I going to attack this and, and do everything I can to learn from it and grow? Um, and am I going to uh, um, like immerse myself and try and be with like-minded people so that I can learn from them and then um, implement? Because at the end of the day, what we're doing is honestly not that complicated. Um, and business in general is not that complicated. We make it to be way more crazy than it is. Um, yeah. You can learn all that. Like, I mean, if, like I was saying, if I could learn how to do this crap then you can. It's not about that really. It's, it's about you. It's about you looking at, at, at how am I going to keep, keep learning and growing and, and get myself to the next level and keep, keep leveling up. Um, so I would say like, that's the biggest thing I would say. Absolutely. Awesome. So you're on the Abundant Culture Podcast and we love to ask every single guest this question. And the question is, how do you spread abundance? Okay. Um, so since abundance, that's always such a, an amazing word that I never know exactly how to, how to say that. Honestly, like in abundance, this gets back to what I was talking about a little bit before about like, I look at from the perspective that I was when I started and I look at all the questions I had, all the millions of questions, all the, all the different things I was trying to figure out. Um, so I want, like, I try and spread to help in terms of abundance by, by um, uh, trying to help as many people as I can, honestly, that are getting started with e-commerce or with the selling on Amazon, any of that stuff. Um, obviously I'm busy, 
uh, I'm, and I'm busier and everyone is when you, when you, when you've been doing it for a while, but I look at it from the perspective of if somebody reaches out to me, if I see something, cause I'm, I'm still in those same Facebook groups all the time. And I'm, um, so if I see something where, um, someone's having an issue, um, I'll, I'll try and, and see if there's a way that I can help them. Or if people reach out to me like through a PM or whatever it is, um, uh, where they're having issues, I'm trying to help them as much as I can so that they don't have to go through those same issues. Like, that's what I look at it as like, all right, if, if I can help them, if I can kind of spread that, like, like you're saying in terms of the abundance, like it's going to help uh, them out. Um, I, like selfishly on my, my end, I'm going to feel good because like I get a sense of satisfaction because I help somebody. Um, and then they're going to feel great in terms of like, okay, I had this issue. And like, I know on my end, when I've had issues, like there's a lot of times I'm like, I, if I could just figure out, like, I don't know how to solve this because it's us as business owners. We're routinely doing things that we've never done before. And we have no idea how to do it. Yeah. So like, if I could reach out to somebody and have them walk me through how to do it, I would feel like, Oh, this is amazing. Um, so to be able to do that for somebody um, uh, is, is what I look at. Absolutely. Great. Definitely agreed. Love it. So uh, you uh, teach the, the world of e-commerce and marketing so well. Uh, I love to learn from the people who have learned from the School of Hard Knocks, honestly. And I see that you definitely had your fair share of lessons from that school. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wants to work with either you or your team, what's the best way to get into contact with you guys? Yeah, so anyone that's listening, um, they wanna learn more, say about chatbots, marketing, any of that kind of stuff, uh, they can contact me on Facebook um, at Douglas Levin. I've got a free cheat sheet, uh, the top five tips for taking full control over your e-commerce income. Um, you can also follow, I've got a, a, a channel, Morning Marketing Machine. I got a free Facebook group. Um, uh, Amazon seller secrets. Um, and obviously like we're talking, I've got coaching as well. Um, and if I can help you in any way, please, please feel free to reach out and I'll see how I can help. Awesome. Awesome. So everyone make sure you reach out because as you can see, he's a wealth of knowledge. So Doug, thank you again for coming onto the podcast and giving us um, all of this wonderful information. I learned a lot. Joe, I know, learned a lot. And I'm sure the audience learned a lot as well. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much for having me on. It was a, it was a pleasure talking to you guys. Excellent. So that's all we have for today, folks. I hope you got as much value out of this as we did. Keep in mind, the only way we can improve is through constructive feedback. So remember to rate and review this episode. Also, you are not the only person that needs to know this super valuable information. So be sure to subscribe and share as well. Stay tuned for the next episode. And remember to always spread abundance. Peace.